Hey guys, Rose from Mecco here. For today's video, we're going to do an overview of our .peen marking software, MC Edit. We'll show you how to set up your marking window, add lines as text, as well as edit them, uh, and insert objects such as shift codes, date codes, logos, counters, and barcodes. Right. So the first thing you're going to want to do to get started in MC Edit is to set your marking window. Uh, your marking window is going to correlate to the marking head that you purchased. Uh, so you can see right now I'm set up for our super fast series 100 by 17. Um, so to change your marking window, uh, go to options, machine and controller parameters, and then under mechanics parameters, you have the ability to set your X and Y travel. Uh, so we'll just assume I'm working with our standard series 90 by 60. Uh, once I hit OK, you'll see it changes the marking window on your screen to correlate with what you had spec'd in. So we'll start by adding text. Um, you do have the ability to add multiple lines of text. We'll start with line one. Uh, and whatever you want to type in uh, to your job file, you type it into the text box here at the bottom. And then we'll walk through the different parameters that you have. Um, so the first is your height. You can specify the height of your object. So let's say I want my characters to be eight millimeters tall. I'll type in eight, and then that will size it for you. The width uh, is done as a percentage of the overall size of your text. Uh, so if you need to condense your characters, you can adjust it right here. Um, so let's say I need this to be half as wide. I would type in 50, and you see it condenses my characters. I'm just going to set that back to normal for now. Font, uh, we have six different fonts that you can choose from, both regular and italic. Uh, so I'll run through these so you can see the different options. Uh, spacing, if you need your characters to be more spaced out, you can adjust this. Uh, this is, again, done as a percentage. The higher your number, the more spaced out your characters will be. Density, uh, density is typically geared toward the electric systems. With uh, the pneumatic systems, you want to leave your density as auto. Uh, auto is going to give you the vibropene technology, um, but if you do have an application where you need your dots spaced out, um, so you can see the correlation between the striking of the pin and where it hits, um, this might be like a low stress application, you can adjust your density, and the lower your number, the more spaced out your dots will be. Uh, and as you grow that number, the dots will come closer together and overlap. So you can see if I set this to a one, my dots are pretty spaced out. But again, this is primarily for the electric units unless you need the dots to be spaced out. Otherwise, set your system to auto and you'll have the vibropene technology with the pneumatic system. Uh, force, force is also geared toward the electric systems. Really the only time that you'll use it with a pneumatic system is if you're doing a barcode, uh, so like a 2D data matrix. Uh, if you increase your force, you can set your pin to strike one, two, or three times on the modules of the barcode if you need some additional depth. Speed, you can run anywhere from a one to a 10. Uh, so one is gonna be the slowest, and 10 will be the fastest. The slower you run the system, the deeper your mark's going to be. The faster you run it, um, the more you'll, you'll get more of a shallow mark. X and Y coordinates, you can specify where you want your object to be, or one of the nice things about working in the software as opposed to the T2 controller is you do have the flexibility to grab your items, your objects, and move them uh, throughout the marking window, and it automatically populates your X and Y coordinates for you. Angle, if you need to rotate your objects, you can uh, specify an angle. 
and it does go in a counterclockwise rotation. So if I type in 90, you'll see it rotates to the left. Set that back to zero. And move that up there. Uh, if you need to do arc marking, you can specify a diameter. And what I typically do for the ease of setting this up is in the alignment, if you make this centered, it will put your text right in the middle and gives you a nice, nice appearance. Uh, you can also change whether you want it to be convex or concave. So right now we're at convex. It's going to be at the top of the diameter. If you prefer it to be at the bottom, you can change it to concave, uh, and then we'll just have to space, space that out a bit. And you can adjust the height of your text here as well. Okay. Um, we're going to set this back to straight text. And if you need to mirror your objects, you can do that both horizontally or vertically. And then alignment, that's just to justify how you want your characters to appear on the screen, left, centered, or right. Um, so that covers kind of the first object and adding text. Um, so the second thing we'll go through is the insert functions. Uh, so we'll just add a second line here. And you'll see all of these sections say same as previous line. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to take all of these parameters from the line above it, which in this case would be line one, and it's going to pull those values and apply the same here. Uh, so if I enter text, you'll see it has the same font, the same size, same spacing as the object above. Um, so we'll start adding some of these functions down here. Uh, so the first is going to be a shift code. Uh, so if you run multiple shifts, and you want the shift code to automatically populate into your information, you can add that here. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is to set your parameters for your shifts. Uh, so to do that, you go to Options, Machine and Controller Parameters. And then on the right side here, uh, you can adjust how many shifts you have and what the starting time is for those shifts. Uh, so right now I have this set to two shifts. And um, it is in military time. So you can adjust your times here. And then the character that you want it to mark for that shift, you enter here. So right now I have it set to mark A for first and B for second. And you can adjust this to correlate uh, to whatever times and shifts that you have. Right. So if I hit insert shift, it'll populate the command into my text box. And you can see it's on first shift. So I have an A populated here. Uh, the second function is to insert uh, either a timestamp or a date code. Uh, so if you select that function, you can see you have uh, a drop-down list of some different formats you can choose. So you can do, um, if you want a Julian date, you can select the day of the year. And again, it automatically populates that into your text box. Uh, and you can add multiples. So if you want a Julian date and then you want a two-digit year, you can add that to it as well. Insert object is going to be used if you have a logo that you would want to insert into your job file. Um, before you insert the logo um, with MC Edit and our T2 controllers, you do have to use um, our other software called MC Vector to draw out the, the logo. Um, once you have that done, then you can import it. Um, so we'll just add another line here. Insert object, and we'll use the co the Kuf logo that I have on my PC. Okay. So you can see it adds the logo. Uh, we'll just make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. Okay. Uh, counter is going to be, if you're doing serialization, you can use the insert counter button function to automatically increment numbers for you. Uh, so just like the shift code, you do have some parameters you can set for your counters. So we'll go back to machine and controller parameters. 
and you can set, set your counters um, down here at the bottom. So if you have a minimum starting value that you want, you can type that in here. I'm just leaving mine set to zero. And then um, if you have a threshold that you want your counter to reset at, you can edit that right here. Uh, and then if you want the leading zeros, you can change this to yes. Otherwise, you can just leave it at no. Okay. And you do have uh, the ability to add two counters. Um, so select insert counter, and then you can choose counter one or counter two, hit OK, and then it adds it to your drop file. And the size, um, since I put it on line four, it's pulling the size from the logo. Uh, insert movement, we're going to skip that for this video. Uh, this is the function you would use if you have a little more automation in your file or if you have like a, a rotary indexer, things like that. So rotaries, uh, barcode scanners, there's functions inside of the insert movement that you can use for that. Uh, so the last thing I'll show you today is going to be a barcode. So we'll go to line five. Um, you have the ability to do a uh, square data matrix, a rectangular data matrix, or a QR code. So you use the insert codification button, and then you can select which one you would like. Um, so square data matrix is the most common. We'll show you that one. You can see it's added to the screen. And then the information that you want embedded in that barcode, you type in between the parentheses. So if you watch the barcode, as I type my information in here, it will adjust the barcode for me. Uh, the more information you have inside of the barcode, the bigger your barcode will have to be to make sure that you can read. Um, and you can also insert um, you know, these objects here so if you want to include, let's say you want to include a date code inside of the barcode, you can go and select which one you want, and it'll add that to the object. All right. So that was a brief overview of MC Edit. Uh, hopefully that helps. If you have additional questions or if you would just like more information on uh, how to use MC Edit or the T2 controller, Feel free to give us a call at 888-369-9190.